Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome to my channel. I have a nautical fish wall decor piece for you today. This decor piece is made using a Dollar Tree sign and paint that you can get from Walmart. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to use puff paint on a hard surface like this sign. I will also show you some techniques on how to get some beautiful effects by using a simple wooden skewer. This unique nautical craft would brighten up any bedroom or bathroom. Okay, are you ready for another crafting adventure? Let me show you what you're going to need to make this beautiful craft. The tools that you're going to be needing are some sandpaper, you're going to need a paintbrush, a cup, and maybe some water. The materials that you're going to need are you're going to need some white acrylic paint. This is by Apple Barrel. I get this from Walmart. And you're going to need some puff paint. I picked this package up from Walmart. You get 12 assorted colors. This is their rainbow selection. And this whole pack was $9.97. So this is actually cheaper to buy it in a pack like this than to buy them individually from the dollar store. Uh, because the dollar store, of course, it's the same size tube and you pay a dollar per piece. So this one you get 12 for $9.97. So this is a really good deal. And then you're going to need one of these fish. I picked this up from the Dollar Tree last year. Um, I have seen some of these in some of the stores, so they may still have them. Uh, but we're going to be redoing this. I liked the shape of the sign, but I, I don't really care for the design. So we're going to redo this and make this a whole lot cuter. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Then you just want to take your sand block and go ahead and you want to remove all of the glitter and sand this down as smooth as possible because we're going to be painting this. So I like to go in circles. It tends to make it easier to get everything off. And then to help with the cleanup, I usually do it on a piece of paper or something. So go ahead and sand this down, get all of the uh, glitter off, and then we're going to prep this by painting one to two coats of your Apple Barrel white paint. Okay? So I have my two coats on and it's nice and dry. And I just painted over the paper. I did not remove it. So to make sure that I didn't get any lifting of the paper, the first layer that I put down was very light and I let it completely dry before I applied my second layer. And that was a heavier layer. And now I've let that dry 24 hours. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and start redoing my board. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just go in and do a little bit of sketching to uh, show me some boundaries. Like down here, where, where is this fin gonna go? Here. Let's put a little bit of a mouth on. Okay. Let's look. How about this? Maybe this is part of a fin here. So I'm just going to go in and break out the body a little bit until I'm happy with it. I want to make sure that it's where I want it to be. And this way I kind of have a direction to go with with the paint. Okay, so I've just kind of given myself a little bit of a sketch where the top fin would be, kind of where this fin is. This part down here is another fin. And then this center part is the main body of the fish. I also pulled out a little googly eye that I'm going to use on him. So I'm going to put his eye about there and I'm actually going to attach that right now. 
And I'm just going to use some Gorilla Super Glue. But you can use whatever glue you have. If you like crafts, hauls, and DIYs, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I do upload new content several times a week. Okay, see, it looks cute already. Now, once you have your areas divided out where you know where things are going to go, depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, I'm right-handed, so when I decorate, I'm going to start on the left side and I'm going to work my way to the right side because when I decorate, my arm is going to be down and so I can work this way and not worry about putting my arm down and what I've just worked on because these paints will take about four hours to dry. So once you lay it down, you don't want to mess with them. You want to give it time to dry, okay? And again, if you're right-handed, you want to start on the left-hand side and work to the right. If you're left-handed, do the opposite. Start on the right-hand side and work to the left. It'll just make it much easier for you and you'll be less likely to stick your arm in the paint you've already laid down. Okay, so I'm going to start here on the tail, and I want to uh, do a nice dark ridge, and then I kind of want to work to lighter to where it's white here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line the edge with black. And these paints are really nice. They come with a very fine tip, so it makes it much easier for you to uh, direct the paint. And then just take your time and slowly squeeze out on a consistent basis. If you need to stop, just stop, reposition, and then start again. skewer. I'm just going to use that to help me keep my lines a little bit more consistent. Just go back through, run it through. This will help connect any breaks, help thin out thicker areas. You can also move the paint a little bit. Make sure you get that very edge covered. Now I'm going to move into the navy blue. I want to lay that right next to the black. But now I have that black down. It makes it much easier to lay down the next one and to easily follow it. And then again, I can go back through and work with that, adjust it if I need to. This also works too when you want to blend the colors. Now I'm going to go with some purple. And then navy again. So now I want to blend a little bit of the purple into the blue, so I'm just going to use the skewer and move that through just by squiggling and pulling lines through. And then go around the bottom. So you just have the skewer. You can use anything, of course, that's straight, even a craft stick. Just something to help you kind of help move the paint. Then you can do a lot of different things and pull the paint. I see, get a little bit dark, light, kind of blend it in, and then I pulled it through. Okay. 
And now I'm going to change my direction and start pulling in some lighter blue, but going in the other direction. Add a little bit of movement and to show kind of that it's a fin. This allows you to adjust what you've laid down a little bit. Now puff paint is definitely different to work with than regular paint, so it may take you a little bit of time to get used to it. But it's really fun. It leaves kind of a three-dimensional effect. It makes it very unique. I thought this would just be a really fun project to do. Now it's up to you. You can make this as colorful as you like, or you can just keep it to very monotone colors. That is completely up to you. You can use what you have access to. If you don't want to use puff paint, you can use regular paint and just go to town. But it's just really nice. I like this. It's something different. It'll have a very unique effect when it's all done and dry. Now, even though this is white on white, I'm still going to lay it down because, like I said, this has that 3D effect, so it will show up. This way also will help me blend that yellow. Okay, so I have hit the back tail fin all finished. For now, I'm going to leave that. Next thing I'm going to do is go through, I'm going to do this big fin up here. And then I'm going to come back and I'll show you what we're going to do with the center. And then also how we're going to finish off the eye. Okay. But I'm going to do basically the same kind of technique that I did through here in through these fins because I want it to look wavy so that you know that's a fin. So I've laid down all of my colors for this top fin. I've gone ahead and used the skewer to kind of mix in the colors and now I'm adding texture and I wanted to show you that. I'm using the sharp point of the skewer and I'm pulling from the lightest color through to the dark. And I'm making lines like they were thin, so it'll have that texture. And I'm just slowly working my way down the fin. This will help blend those colors and look like an actual fin. Isn't that cool? Okay, so the next thing that I want to do before I get down to the bottom here, because I'm going to repeat the process that I just did here, down here, for this large fin as well. But I want to do a little bit of detail work here around the face. So I'm going to go ahead and take the light blue.
Now that just gives the face a little bit more shape to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of striping around the eyes here. Now, what I did before I started doing this is I did go and look up some fish that are like this and kind of look at how their fins are laid out and everything. So I had a little bit of an idea of what I wanted to do because I wanted it to look like a fish, but of course I want it to be a lot brighter. So that helped me know what I wanted to do and how I wanted to lay out my fish. It helped me determine where my fins were. So you can do that before you get started. Okay, and then I'm going to take my black and I'm going to go ahead and circle right around the eye. I wanted to lay those stripes down first because I wanted a nice clean black circle around the eye. And then I'm going to lay in the mouth. Okay, now I cleaned that up a little bit around the eye, so now I have a little bit of a mess, so that's okay. I'm just going to go with the white and go around that area. This is a really good project. If you've never worked with puff paint before, this is something fun to do just to get used to it because it is definitely a different feel. So it's something that you need to get used to. So through the body here, I do plan on adding some more stripes. So I'm just going to basically kind of follow the shape of the body. Just move the line a little bit. When I looked at them, this is what they had. A lot of them had these types of stripes. Doesn't that look cool? I think that looks so cool. Okay, so I'm just going to go in, I'm going to add some more blue stripes, and then I'm going to come in and do this bottom fin just like I did the top. I haven't quite decided how I want to do this little fin and this little fin that comes up in the front. So I'm going to leave those for now. So I'll lay down the rest of my paint and then I'll show you. Okay, so I went ahead and finished the bottom fin. I added some more of my blue lines and then I did work on the face a little bit. <clears throat> Here on these little fins, I laid down a green line and then I filled in with the white. And then I used my skewer to go ahead and to pull that green through the white. And it gives that really pretty look and also looks like there's movement. I went in and thickened up the stripes around the eyes. I like that better. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit more color into the body and then work on the face a little bit more. Okay, I have completed my fish and I'm very happy with the results. I did go in and add a little bit of yellow and green to the body. And then I was thinking, you know, a lot of fish have spots. So I went in and added some spots. My spots uh, are dark brown, some orange, and a few little black. 
I thought that added a nice little burst of extra color, but I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. I like that it's nice and textured because of the puff paint, and it's a new and different technique to redo one of the signs at the Dollar Tree. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. I hope you and your family are all staying happy, healthy, and strong. You have a great day, and I will catch you next time.